places and man we're just trying to figure out because we're close so like we're like uh, trying to figure out how to get to one and then the other and I mean
Good morning, church. Good morning. So good to see you all. It's good to be back. I'm Pastor Chris, the lead pastor here at Peace Tree. I've been uh, gone for the past month on sabbatical. It's great to see the band. Uh, it's good to have a band on this Sunday. Uh, there's, I know there's a little bit of miscommunication last week. Um, I think, I believe it was uh, uh, Johnny and Sarah and uh, Betsy and... And Karen, who uh, jumped up and filled in last week and led the, the group in worship. So uh, thank you all so much for doing that. And to everybody who, uh, yes, everybody who has been working the computer, working the sound and the live stream, uh, helping out with kids in the nursery, uh, with uh, donuts and hospitality and, and worship and preaching. Uh, so thank you all so much. We were able to kind of keep in, keep in touch from afar and be able to, to check in and see how everybody was doing. Um, but uh, here we are. It's August. It's uh, about to be back to school time. We've got school starting up for a lot of our local students here in South Carolina, my home state. They started like a week and a half ago. I don't understand. And they don't end their uh, spring semester until June. So they ended the beginning of June and they started back up at the end of July. So uh, to our students, you've, you've had more of a summer break than, uh, than my friend's kids back home in South Carolina. But we're going to be having a blessing of the backpacks in just a few moments. Uh, and next week, friends, we'd love for you to invite a friend to church. You might be even thinking about somebody right now that you would like to invite here to Peace Tree. Maybe you've talked to them about it for, for quite some time, or they know that you've joined, or they know that you worship here regularly, and they've asked you about Peace Tree. This is the perfect opportunity to invite them, it, even to day over the course of this worship service. If they come to mind, you have total permission to text during the worship service. Like, take your phone out and say, just, hey, uh, friend, I've been thinking about you, and I would really love for you to come with me to church next week as we kick off this new school year. So uh, feel free to, to take out your phones and text throughout the service if there are people that come to mind uh, and you want to invite them to join us here next week for our Invite a Friend to Church Sunday, our Back to School Sunday. Uh, and like I said, we're going to be blessing backpacks in just a few moments. But right now, we'd love for you to stand and join us in singing our opening hymn, uh, the victory chant, Hail, Hail, Lion of Judah. Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Total praise, ancient of days. You're perfect in all your ways. Perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the land. Glory, glory to the land. You lead us into the land. Oh, 
you're my king. Oh, Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I'll praise you all my days. I'll praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Welcome once again to Peace Tree. As I said, I'm Chris Roof, the lead pastor here. We'd love for uh, all of our friends online to say hello in the chat. Let us know where you're joining us from. We welcome you today as uh, you join us in worship. And uh, for everybody else here, we hope that you'll check in on Facebook because every time that we receive a review of our church or a check-in at our location, we're able to make a donation to a local nonprofit. Last month, we supported Hannah's Hope of Memphis, an adoption agency that works with adoptive families, women in Christ crisis, as well as mothers who need prenatal care and assistance once their child is born and as they raise them here in the Memphis metro area. So we are extending our support of Hand is Hope for the month of August, so be sure to check in again on Facebook, maybe with a picture of folks sitting on your row or by tagging your friends in your post. Be sure to use the hashtag Hannah's Hope Memphis so that others can learn more about this month's nonprofit partner and seek out information about Hannah's Hope. They've got a great fundraiser that's going to be coming Coming up, uh, I know in September, it's a karaoke night. I love karaoke, so you might see me there. Uh, but Hand is Hope Memphis, a wonderful organization uh, here in the Memphis metro area, assisting uh, women throughout West Tennessee and also right here in our city. So uh, we thank you for checking in. And, and our friends at home, we hope that you will check in as well and like and share this video on Facebook. After taking a break for the summer, our In the Loop house group will be kicking off fall semester, uh, their fall semester of uh, Bible studies on August the 14th. They've got a new study that they're going to be starting up, Strength in the Struggle. You can check out our Facebook event page for more information regarding the time and location of this group since they're going to be uh, meeting on select Tuesdays and Wednesdays and cycle through several homes this year. So always uh, Keep, keep up with our Facebook event page to see where they're going to be meeting, which street they're going to be at, uh, and if it's going to be a Tuesday or Wednesday of that particular week. And also on August the 14th, our men's house group, Bro, will be meeting at the home of Chad and Michelle Crisco after we take a week off uh, this upcoming Wednesday the 7th. So if you're a guy who's been looking for a supportive group of men to talk about life and work and family, then be sure to check out Bro at 6.30 p.m. on August the 14th. Those two house groups start Starting back up on August the 14th. Lastly, our United Women in Faith are holding their bi-monthly meal. Uh, I know, let's see, does it, okay, that says June the 9th, but uh, that, that's an incorrect date because I couldn't get it to upload before, before crashing uh, the Pro Presenter program a couple times. It's going to be meeting next week, August the 11th. All women of the church are invited to attend, and family members of those women are invited to join in the potluck meal portion of the gathering, uh, meet in the fellowship hall following worship to discuss global and local mission efforts that our women support and are involved with. And again, that's our United Women women in faith, uh, bi-monthly lunch and gathering and the meal that's going to be in the fellowship hall next Sunday after worship. We welcome you once again to Peace Tree Friends. We're so happy that you're here uh, with us in person, online. Again, it's good to be uh, back after being gone for the month of July on sabbatical. It was a, it was a great time of renewal and time with family uh, and time getting to, uh, to just be able to do things I, I'm not a normally able to do because of responsibilities on the weekends. Uh, and so I just thank you so much uh, 
for allowing me to be able to, to leave, to be gone. I, I thank uh, Josh and Harry and David uh, for bringing the message those days and, um, and to our worship team and to everybody behind the scenes uh, that volunteer and help to make sure our children's ministry happens, our ministry around the building. Uh, a, a, a thanks to Regina and Karen for think, keeping things running in the office as well. Uh, but it's great to be back and, uh, and just in time for school, right? And like I said earlier, we're going to be blessing some backpacks this morning, blessing some students this morning. So at this time, we'd like to invite up our children's minister, Karen Kelly, along with any students, any children, parents, grandparents, anybody else who'd like to come up today and pray over our young people uh, this morning as we prepare them for this school year. You're, not, you're, you're never too young, never too old uh, to, to be able to receive a blessing uh, to our students and to our children who have brought their backpacks this morning. So if y'all will come up here, uh, just down here on the floor, we invite you to come at this time. Hey guys. All right. Oh yeah. We've got the back. We've the, your kid. Yeah. Your kids are. Yeah. But you can cut, yeah, so join us up here. All right. H you going to take a seat, buddy. Oh, he don't know where to go. Okay. All right. Well, so this is, this is just a, a, a small sampling, right, of, of who we've got here at our church that are our students. Well, Betsy, you're a student, too. You're working on your, you're working on your master's. Uh, we've got students of, uh, uh, at every age, grade level, and uh, in different schools. Uh, we, we got what, high school represented. We got some middle schools represented, elementary schools. Uh, I know that we, we've got some preschools represented with uh, Betsy's kids' uh, backpacks. And, uh, and I think about our kids that are in the nursery right now. We've got a gift that we're going to get to them after worship uh, this morning. But uh, friends, if, if you can, we're going to invite you, if you will, to um, extend your, your, your hands out. To these, to these children, to these parents, uh, and to these, uh, these students as uh, we say a, a prayer for them. Let us pray together. Today we have before us these students, their backpacks, backpacks that will be carried to and from school by the children and youth gathered here. These backpacks that will contain work to be done, work that's been returned, books to be studied, tools to complete homework, notebooks, pencils, pens, protractors, compasses, crayons, rulers, scissors, glue sticks, and other items used for schoolwork that will find their way in and out of these backpacks and in and out of the hands of these students. And some days, Lord, we know that there's going to be so much stuff to fill these backpacks and the minds of these students that they might find it difficult to walk. Other days, it's going to be light and nearly empty. But on each and every day, Lord, these backpacks represent the work required of the students gathered here. And as in every aspect of our life, we bring these before God for a blessing at this time. And so, gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessing and they commit themselves to study and to learn in the school year that's ahead of them. We ask your blessing on each of them and we ask your blessing to be upon these backpacks that they will hold the schoolwork of each student and be carried from home to school and back again. And as these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded, be reminded of the love and the care that this congregation has for them and surrounds them with each school day. We pray as well for teachers, for administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and nurturing these students for the learning that surrounds them. May they be surrounded by love and with care. Be with all those who make the school day possible, those who work in the cafeterias, in the hallways, that drive buses, that help students safely cross roads at crosswalks, be with each and every coach, each and every counselor, each and every person who will look over these students and keep them safe day to day to day. And we pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who we seek to follow day by day by day. And all of God's children said, amen. Well, 
Thank you, students, for coming on up here. We do pray for you. We hope that this will be a wonderful school year for you. And Miss Karen has a, a little gift for each of our students. Uh, and parents, uh, if, uh, if you need to grab, snag an extra one, uh, we're, we'll have this for uh, our friends uh, next week as well for our back to school Sunday and invite a friend to church Sunday. And uh, if you have children that are in the nursery, or maybe you just want one for yourself, then find Miss Karen and uh, we'll get that gift to you as well. A reminder of how much God loves them and that their church uh, here at Peace Tree loves them as they go about their school day. Well, we've got another song. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and stand uh, as we sing our second hymn uh, of the day, one that, that Josh has written, one that we've sung several times, one that we said, uh, we said the words for just a second ago, God is love, let all proclaim. So let's proclaim this morning that God is love, friends. Let's join our voices together in worship of our Lord and Savior. this time, children ages 5 through 5th grade are invited to attend Peace Tree Kids. Parents, uh, if you didn't get a chance to check in your children uh, earlier today, we ask that you would walk with them to room 7 as they follow uh, Miss Karen and Miss Jess there. And uh, 
our kids can all be picked up from room seven after the close of worship. We ask that you uh, head there right after worship and so that you're uh, able to get them and as well as the, the nursery so that those volunteers and workers can uh, be able to get to their families uh, after worship as soon as possible. So uh, we thank our children's ministers and volunteers for taking them and caring for them. And our ushers at this moment are going to be taking up the offering. If uh, you'd like to give online, though, if you, you don't carry cash, I hardly ever carry cash anymore, uh, or you didn't bring a check, you can make a gift online by visiting peacetree.church slash give. There are several buttons there, one that takes you to our new giving platform. We hope that you'll uh, go ahead and register a, a a recurring gift to the church. That's the, the best way that you can help us. But if you, you haven't been able to do that yet, you can give through PayPal. You can give through Venmo. Uh, if you're watching this morning and you prefer to mail in a check, you can do that by sending it to our mailing address, our physical address, 9315 East Shelby Drive in Carville, Tennessee, 38017. Thank you all so much for the ways that you support uh, the families, the children, the ministries, the worship uh, that takes place here at Peace Tree. As our ushers continue to take up the offering this morning, there's two events you've, you've heard folks talk about over the last couple of months, things that are coming up over these next two weekends. The first is Popsicles in the Park. This is going to be at Suggs Park. It's the second time that we're, we've, been, we've done this uh, this summer. I think that folks found out about it the first time and maybe missed out on it, so they have not wanted to miss out. We've uh, sold out all of our uh, allotted tickets on Eventbrite. We've got about 90-something folks that have said they're interested in it on Facebook. Uh, so should be a great uh, time to come together. Suggs Park does not require uh, individuals who want to use a splash pad to be residents of Carnival. Uh, so this is the reason we pick Suggs is because it's open to everybody. And so if you have friends that don't live in Carnival, uh, maybe they live in Mississippi, they live in uh, Memphis, Cordova, Germantown, invite them to come this Saturday, and enjoy a popsicle, find out information about our church, and uh, they'll also will receive information about about our back to school cookout and foam party that's gonna be taking place the very next Saturday after the first full week of school, celebrating the start of the new school year with a foam party on our campus. Uh, we did this last year. Instead of having inflatables, we had Magic Mr. Nick come out with his crew, his foam crew, and uh, we had a great time. This year, we're pushing uh, the start time to four o'clock. Uh, instead of having it uh, in the heat of the day, we started it last year at three o'clock. So four to Six is going to be our back to school cookout and foam party, free food, lots of fun, music, and a chance for our friends to come to our campus uh, to know where our church is located and to invite them to come and join us to, at future worship services. So those are the things that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Please mark it on your calendars, RSVP on Facebook, invite your friends and share with others. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, in this time of offering our gifts and pledging our tithes, we come before you, acknowledging your steadfast grace and your boundless love. As we present these gifts, may we also offer our hearts, recognizing the depth of our humanity and the need for your healing touch. Grant us the courage to confront our failings and give us the wisdom we need to seek reconciliation and renewal in your divine presence. We pray it all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, we're starting a new series today titled The Fight. The Fight. So you're going to hear more about that in just a few moments, we're going to be doing that for this Sunday, the next three Sundays, all through this month of August. But we also want you to know that once we complete this series, it's going to be Labor Day weekend. And so what we have traditionally done on some of these holiday weekends is we've had a, a good old-fashioned hymn sing. So on 901 Day, September the 1st, Labor Day weekend, we're going to have a hymn sing. Uh, we also will have an opportunity, I believe, with um, the
the last Sunday in August, which is a communion Sunday, and then as well as this hymn sing Sunday for our sound collective, our worship team, to have a chance to showcase some things that they're going to be working on at an upcoming uh, fall music retreat and workshop. And then we're going to be holding that on Saturday, August the 24th. We haven't created an event for that yet, but we're going to be getting that information out. Uh, some of the members of our sound collective uh, have already had that date on their calendars, but we want to be sure that all of you know, in case you'd like to uh, get involved with our worship team, maybe maybe once a, once a month, uh, maybe more than that. Maybe you play an instrument, maybe you like to sing, or you like to harmonize, or you'd like to be a part of that. We're looking at trying to have child care part of that day, uh, trying to have a meal, and so that's August 24th, but that's to, to prep us for maybe a special song during communion, during worship on Sunday, August the 25th, a communion Sunday, to close out the fight series, but then on 901 day, Labor Day weekend, we're gonna have a hymn sing. So no formal message that day, just a chance to sing some songs that we love, to hear from our, our uh, worship team, our sound collective, and that's gonna be on 901 day, September the 1st. And if you wanna start getting your hymn requests and your song requests in, uh, you can do that now by texting the church's phone number, 901-286-5532. Will you pray with me? Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and the meditations of each of our hearts and minds be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, a quick show of hands. How many of you have been watching the Olympics this past week? Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's most of us, right? Uh, Especially after the last one during the, the COVID, the COVID years, right? Uh, it just felt so strange watching some of those events when you couldn't have, but maybe a handful of family members in the stands cheering on, and people were wearing face masks like they they, they were asked to, and uh, and very little hugs and human contact, and it, it just it felt strange, right? So this has felt like a return to form. It feels like it's supposed to feel as and members of this global community get to cheer on friends and family members and representatives of their countries. And man, I've just, I've, I've loved it. I've, I've had some favorite moments so far this week. Um, one is seeing Simone and Suni uh, and the individual all around. I think we got a picture of them, Jaden, don't we? Simone and Suni, there they are. Man, man, gosh, those, those these young women, just to, to think about uh, the individual all around when you go back to uh, 20, 16, and then uh, to see Simone win it gold then, and then SUNY gets it in 2020, which was, was really 2021, in uh, Tokyo, and then for them both to, to be on the podium together, Simone back in the gold spot, SUNY in bronze, and that uh, that young lady from Brazil, have you seen her story, uh, Re Rebecca Andrade? Oh my goodness gracious, eight children, her mother uh, gave up her bus fare in order to help her daughter get to the gym in order to practice because without that she had to walk two hours uh, each way to get to the, the training facility. Um, it's it's just amazing some of the stories that have come out, but definitely with gymnastics, uh, I think as a country, we love to see our gymnasts uh, excel and succeed. And, uh, and, and and even Mr. Pommel Horse guy, like the Clark Kent dude, right? I mean, that guy was fun. Uh, to see him get bronze the other day, wonderful. In the in the swimming pool, Katie Ledecky, oh my goodness. Uh, and and the, the, the latest report that I saw, she's like, she's not counting out Los Angeles in four years, like she might come back to, uh, they showed one graphic of how many miles she has swum, uh, and it's enough to almost go around the circumference of the equator, like that, my goodness, she's gone, she has swum the distance that would be a, a tenth of the way to get to the moon, right? Uh, how many, how many miles this woman has swum, and uh, the ways in which she has represented our country, uh, and brought honor to her family and to herself, and just the, the different things that she's done, uh, to distinguish herself. I'll, I'll say, uh, being a, a part white, part Filipino dude, right? Because you, be, you can be two races, right? Uh, you can, part white, part Filipino dude, that my, my mother from the Philippines, the, the, the Philippines have 
uh, they have competed in the Olympics for a hundred years, and it wasn't until Tokyo that they won any sort of medal, any sort of medal, and it was, I think, for weightlifting. It was in gold. And then we were watching the uh, men's floor exercise, uh, watching it in real time and uh, getting to see, because I, I have friends from Lifetime Fitness that come to my Zumba classes that are keeping, you know, making sure it's like, hey, you're, you, you're following the Filipino athletes too, aren't you? You know, there's like 20 something athletes. So you think about how many hundreds of American athletes that we have representing our country there. And it's like, oh yeah, that's great. That's, it's good to know that they're there. And as we're watching, I Said, oh hey, family, come come on in. It's it's the it's Carlos from the Philippines. He did an amazing uh, an amazing floor routine, and as we saw all the people that followed him, and he continued to be in that gold medal spot, uh, I was just so pleased to see. And he was shocked, right? He he was shocked. There. It, I didn't. I put this one of him holding up the gold medal, but where when he actually like saw it, just the look on her, his face. There have been some other surprises too, where we 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 had some folks that we thought were going to win, uh, Shakiri uh, on the track at the hundred meter. Uh, but um, then when you have a country that comes in who's never won who's never won a medal before, right? So they come in the mixed four by four hundred meter um, race. Oh my goodness, the Americans set a role World record in their like qualifying heat, but then they came in silver um, right behind the Netherlands. Oh my goodness, they came out of nowhere. So much, so much happening at the Olympics, and uh, and it's just been so much fun to watch. I love watching volleyball, men's, women's, indoor beach. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Got caught some fencing the other day. Uh, Alyssa, if, a, if equestrian is on, she, she's watching equestrian. Uh, Snoop Dogg is watching equestrian. He's watching the he's watching the horses crip walk. Uh, can we also just talk about the fact that somehow Snoop Dogg, who uh, you know, it's like I'm trying to he's 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 not that he's like 52 years old, right? Something like that uh, has gone from like gangster rapper from like the early 90s to like America's grandpa. And he's going to be on The Voice with Michael Buble and Reba McIntyre, right? Like uh, I, the, the transformation, he's hanging out with Martha Stewart. He's doing all the Snoop Dogg things. Uh, Flavor Flav didn't know that he has fully sponsored the women's uh, polo team because he heard that those women were having to work two or three jobs to support themselves because n nobody was supplying any anything towards their training. And uh, he found out about that, and so he, he took it upon himself uh, as a celebrity to use his, his, his money, his influence uh, to, to fund their training. Uh, and he's there, there's, so, there's other celebrities that we've been able to see on TV. Uh, the track and field stuff, as I mentioned earlier, just is, is so much fun to watch. And it got me thinking about the fight that each of these athletes have had to experience. The fight. Mentally. The fight mentally to push themselves. You think about the limits that you push up against on right, in your life, in their life, there's certain things uh, with, uh, in gymnastics with the vault the other day, that Simone will, she only ever does it in competition because like, you think about, she's a, 20, she's a 27 year old, she's one of the oldest gymnasts out there. She's running at full speed, jumping off something that's gonna launch her into <laughs> this thing that like, if any of us tried it, it would, you know, knock the, you know, take our heads clean off. The fight, the mental fight. And, and again, with Simone, I just think about how some, some criticized her three years ago for stepping away or for quitting. They called her a quitter. And they got mad at the media for um, praising her, for knowing when to step back, knowing when to, to rest, knowing when uh, she would be putting herself in danger. They ridiculed her for it. They mocked her for it. And they got mad at people that praised her for taking a step back. But look at what has happened since then. She has taken a step back in order to regroup, to get rid of the twisties that were plaguing her. She, she had no uh, awareness of where she was in the air. She came back 
she's the goat, right? She's the greatest of all time. She came back to prove all of her dissenters and detractors wrong. And think about the mental toughness, the mental toughness, the mental fight that she experienced, that any of these athletes experience, to not let the haters get to you, to build up a resolve, to be strong enough emotionally too. Think about the fight emotionally that these individuals on the world stage experience each and every day, each and every time that the gun fires off and you're on the track or a whistle blows or a buzzer goes off or a judge posts a score. And the physical fight, the physical fight that athletes have to go through, Olympians have to go through. Maybe it's a sport that requires a, a lot of running, like, uh, like tennis uh, or soccer or literally running like a marathon or a triathlon. Some that involve physical contact. I mean, even uh, basketball, watching, watching this this year's uh, men's basketball team. I've been watching three-on-three -three basketball. I took in a little bit of judo the other day. I have no idea how you, how you score that, but there's a lot of grappling. You think about wrestling or even the image from the title slide for this series with the boxing gloves, boxing itself, the physical fight, the emotional fight, the mental fight that these athletes experience. And perhaps in our own lives, we've experienced these types of emotional and mental and physical fights. Having to absorb hateful language from a, a customer or a client, because the customer is always right. We want to provide good service to them. Maybe you work at a job or you volunteer at a nonprofit that requires a tremendous amount of physical labor. Maybe you have to load and unload items. Maybe you're standing on your feet hours on end. My mom is a nurse. I would hear that a lot, just how much she was on her feet, how many times she had to lift patients in and out of wheelchairs, in and out of beds. Maybe you yourself are caring for somebody at home. Maybe you yourself are a caretaker and you realize the amount of physical fight and exertion it takes. You work with your hands. You work out in this heat. What kind of fight have you experienced? The Apostle Paul even talks about life feeling like a fight. We see this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, where he writes, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Can you say that with me? I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. The good fight. Life is like a fight. Physically, mentally, emotionally. And so, yes, life can feel like we're in the midst of a fight. Maybe in our workplaces, in our schools, in our homes, with our finances, trying to make ends meet with inflation the way that it is, with, with uh, companies continuing to profit off of us because they could lower prices, but they haven't. Maybe there's the fight we experience with friends and family as we discuss hot button issues, especially in this season that we're living in, discussing politics or disagreeing about parenting or about your personal life choices. And yes, there are fights that we have internally, right, with ourselves. We go back and forth about whether we should do something or whether the thing that we said came out right or whether we should turn around and go back in and be the first to apologize or whether we're going to stand our ground and dig our heels in. We have fights with ourselves internally. But there's another type of fight that's occurring right now, and it can go deeper than these types of challenges and struggles that I've laid out. And I dare say that if we can understand this fourth type of fight, 
then some of the other difficulties that we experience can be and will be sorted out by God. And the type of fight I'm talking about is the spiritual fight. The spiritual fight. We can encounter physical fights, mental fights, started by someone else, maybe internally with ourselves, emotional fights, we had a chance to watch a scene from Inside Out back in June. I had a chance to take my kids to see Inside Out 2 last month. Think about those emotional beliefs, challenges, feelings, belief systems. But what about the spiritual fight that is before us? You know, Karen's out of the room. I know her hand would be the first to shoot up when I ask this. How many fans of the TV show Friends are in this room? Yes? Okay, yeah, I, got, I, got, I got a couple. Yeah, I'm a Friends fan. I mean, I, I always confess to you, I, I, was, I was a Seinfeld guy. I'm a show about nothing. Yeah, I know. I'm a show about nothing kind of guy. But I'd catch an episode here and there, especially as the reruns were syndicated. Uh, if there's a young person sitting next to you, explain to them what syndication means. Like later today at lunch, uh, it's sort of like streaming, right? It's sort of like streaming. Um, I caught, I remember watching the finale. I had no clue what was going on in the finale, but I was part of like the millions of people that watch that series finale. Whether you were a fan of the show or not, it's probably safe to say that if you grew up at any point in the 90s or the early 2000s, you know the sitcom's theme song as performed by, do you know, the, who, what's the band's name? Y'all know? The Rembrandts. Good work, Betsy. Got to get you a trivia on Monday nights. So no one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke, you're broke. Your love life's DOA. It's like you're always stuck in second gear. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, but I'll be there for you. Right? Have you ever, like, taken a look at the words? The lyrics of this, like, the lyrics are kind of depressing, but they sing it so cheerfully that it sounds peppy. It's like, yeah! You know, and, and the message of I'll be there for you, I think, is a great message, but man... When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, whew, that's rough. That is rough. Has life ever felt that way for you? Does it feel that way right now? Not your day, your week, your month. We, we talk about when it rains, it pours. <laughs> Some, some of you have experienced that. Some of you have said, yeah, and then sometimes it pours on the first day and the second and the third and it's monsoon season and it never goes away. We got, we got a hurricane that's about to, to hit Florida uh, here. I think about those winds and the water and the, and the rising floods and, and all of that. And doesn't it feel like sometimes you've got all of these things happening in your life that you're tempted to say, this, this isn't normal, is it? This is unnatural. We might even say it feels supernatural for all these bad things to be happening to us at the same time, one after another after another. You're, you're tempted to take uh, holy water and, and pour it into your, your morning cup of joe, maybe a, a coffee mug that says, not today, Satan, <laughs> right? Doesn't it feel like that sometimes? Like it feels like there's like a, a spiritual enemy with a hateful agenda that's trying to push you down and push you around. So perhaps we can acknowledge today that the primary fight that we could encounter this school year is a spiritual fight. One where the tempter and his demons will try to dump bad juju on us, try to mess with our good vibes, try to put us in a bad headspace and convince us to waste our time and our thought and our energy on the devil's foolishness. 
I said earlier we're going to be spending a lot of time in Ephesians this month. I encourage you to begin reading Paul's letter to these new Christians living in Ephesus. But for now, we're going to take a look at Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Take a look at that again. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. Each day there are fights happening all around us. There are fights occurring on the spiritual plane of existence. There's a fight that's occurring for our very souls. And today we have an opportunity to acknowledge that we cannot do it by ourselves. I'm not equipped for that. I haven't trained for that game. I don't even know what the boundaries are. I don't know what the devil can and cannot do to me. I cannot fight this fight by myself. I need Jesus. If I try to do it by myself, I'm going to hit a ceiling. I'm going to plateau. I'm going to reach my limit. But with Christ, all things are possible. With Christ, we've already won. We have already been saved. Not by our own doing, not by our own good deeds, but because Jesus fought the battle for us and he won the battle for us. The victory is already guaranteed. So if I know that the, the victory is already guaranteed, I don't have to spend all of my time and effort to, to say, how can I save myself? Instead, I can shift my focus from myself and I can look to Christ. I can start asking, what would Christ want for me? What would Christ want for my family? What does Christ desire for my workplace, my church, my community? To shift my concentration from my own sinful desires, my own selfish desires, and turn my attention to Jesus and to ask what it is that he has in store for me and what he desires for my life. So Lord, may I put my efforts and my attention into those areas, not on the news cycles, that are going to be coming at us 24-7, not on TikTok, not on social media, where there is fake news and misinformation and disinformation that's being spread each and every day. I saw one the other day that, that, that claimed that Simone was, that had, had made a baby announcement and that she had done this pregnant. And, and, then, and then you researched it. And it's like, no, she was talking about getting baby Botox and how she hated it, and she didn't want to do Botox in any shape or form, not even baby Botox, like ever again. But somebody saw a baby in Simone, and then they, they put a tweet or a truth, or they TikToked about it, they put it on a reel, they put it on YouTube, someone grabbed a hold of it and started reporting it. There's a lot of this stuff trying to distract us each and every day. But if I can put my attention on Jesus, and if he can put my priorities in the right order, then I may be able to, to make it through this, this fight that's before me. I could start to build God's kingdom here on earth so that it slowly transforms our world into God's heaven. Now, I've sung a song from the 90s I know y'all probably missed my singing while I was gone, right? Um, let's, do, let's do a children's hymn now. Y'all know this one. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Mm. Yes, Jesus loves me. They are weak, but he is strong. I think as a child, I always thought, it's like, yeah, I'm weak. I'm weak now. I'm five years old. I can't quite. There's a great episode of Bluey where 
Bluey and her and, and Bandit, her dad, are watching all these little kid Muffin and Bingo and other kids trying to like trying to drink water from a water fountain by themselves, trying to make it from one monkey bar to the next. They don't have enough momentum. Their arms aren't long enough to get from one to the next. And I think, yeah, when I was that age, I hear this phrase, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. But friends, aren't we all God's little ones? Aren't we all God's children of every race, of every country, of every place? We're God's beloved children. And I, I, again, I have been saved by grace through faith, not by my own doing. I am still weak. I, I'm willing to do what Simone did in Tokyo and take a step back and admit my shortcomings and say, I cannot do this on my own. I need you to help me, Lord. I need you to fight the battle for me. And so there's no need to aimlessly beat my fists against the air like I'm, like I'm boxing a ghost. There's nothing for me to prove because Jesus has already won the victory. So friends, start off this new school year with the assurance that the battle is already won. Whatever the devil and his minions may throw at you, know that it cannot overcome the strength of Jesus Christ. There is a spiritual fight that is waiting for each of us. But when we face it, know that Jesus has already saved us. And if we know this, and if we believe it with all our hearts, then we're golden. We're golden. No matter what, we know that God's got us. Any failure you've experienced, give it to God and he'll trade it for our success. Have you fallen down? Allow God to help you back up. You don't have enough in the tank to keep going? Just put one foot in front of the other and know that God will give you the strength that you need for each of life's fights. The mental fights the emotional, the physical, and yes, especially the spiritual fights that we cannot fight on our own. And friends, remember this. God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to this world to redeem you. And the battle has already been won. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we have one final hymn that we're going to sing this morning, one final praise song. It's one that you may know, the Lion and the Lamb. We've already proclaimed that God is love. We've, we've hailed the Lion of Judah. Not only is God our, our Lion, fighting for us, fighting our battles for us, winning the victory for us. But Christ has also demonstrated what it means to be the lamb, to lay ourselves down, to admit that we can't do it by ourselves, that we need the strength of God in our lives to fight the battles that we cannot. So let's stand and let's sing this final song together now. Sins of the world, the world. Wins. 
the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. Our God who calls the saved is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. sins of the world his blood breaks the chain and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb who can stop the Lord Almighty, 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 who can stop the Lord of the Lord. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battle. And every knee will bow before him. God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the Every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this Christ that we worship, this Savior who has come into our lives, he is the one who has fought the battle for us. The victory is already won. We can't do it by ourselves. We never could. We need Christ. We need God in our lives. And so as you go about this week and you consider the challenges that you face, don't forget that the tempter is out there plotting a spiritual fight against you, but you have nothing to fear when God is in your corner, when Christ is in your heart. So may we continue to turn to Jesus in our times of need. May we be willing to admit we can't do it on our own. We've been saved by grace through faith, not by our own doing, but because of God's marvelous gift to us our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go with him. Go in his strength and go in his peace. Amen.